How's it going people? Welcome to my first ever YouTube video. Yeah, it, it's, it's, the, it's my first ever one in front of the camera, so it makes sense. Um, yeah, I've been meaning to do this for a while now, but I just, it, you know, I just didn't really feel comfortable in front of the camera. So I've got a lot of growing to do, um, but that will happen over time. Um, my name's Sham Ismail, if you didn't already know. Um, and I am a graphic designer primarily that dabbles into filmmaking and videography from time to time. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to take this image and make it into this image. <laughs> um, and so if you're interested and you want to learn my tips, tricks and techniques, then uh, carry on watching this video and uh, do subscribe because there's more to come. But so without further ado, let's get straight into the tutorial because if you're anything like me, then you probably hate when you watch a video and the host just keeps blabbering on about things that are just not relevant, but you, you, should, you should definitely subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Once we get into Lightroom, one of the first things you wanna do is crop your image. I usually go for a four x five as it's usually for Instagram. After cropping your image, the first thing you want to do is get the radial filter. Draw out a nice round shape as this will be your light source. Make sure to invert to ensure any applied effects are made inside the circle. You can follow the coordinates that I set, but this part is completely subjective. Go for the settings that best suit your image. In this part, I learned a pretty cool trick from a friend, Roman. To create nice soft light, Roman advised when applying effects, to your radial filter, bump up the exposure, drop your highlights, and finally bring down the dehaze, and this will give you a light source that looks and feels natural. Once you're happy with how your radial filter is looking, click done. Right now the image looks slightly dull. To bring more life to the image, bump up the exposure value so we can start to reveal more of the detail. To prevent your radial filter becoming too overexposed, drop your highlight value and this should restore the right amount of balance. To make the image warmer, slide your temperature slider to the right. Sometimes when making alterations to the entire image, certain aspects of the image can look blown out. For this instance, my hand and my head. To combat this, we can erase certain parts of our radial filter by using a brush. The next thing you want to do is apply a graduated filter. I'm applying this to the darker areas of the image to reveal more details in the shadows. Drag out a gradual filter and bump up the exposure value. Again, this is completely subjective. The values you enter depend completely on the image you are editing. Naturally, a light source is always much harsher in and around the highlight area. I added an additional radial filter and played around with the values to see what looked best.
Once you're happy with the way your image is looking, it's time to head over to Photoshop. Click Photo, Edit in, Photoshop. This should open a new document in Adobe Photoshop. If not, you can export the image as normal and drop it into Photoshop. In this program, we'll learn to create those nice light streaks to really amplify the light. Head straight to the Layers panel and create a new layer. Hide the photo layer below. Set your foreground color to black and select the Paint Bucket tool. Apply the color black to the canvas, create a new layer and head over to Window, Brush Settings. In this section, you will be presented with a bunch of options. The idea is to create a brush that has a random stippling effect. Start with Shape Dynamics and play around with the size jitter, angle jitter and even roundness jitter. Try and get your brush as random as possible. Next, move over to the scatter section. Increase your scatter and scatter count as shown. Finally, finish off with count jitter. Once you're happy, hit the X. Increase the size of your brush and bring the hardness down to 70%. Make sure that your brush is set to white and start brushing away. Paint in the white circles and try to make them as random as you can. Once you're happy, switch your brush back to black, decrease the size and paint in as shown. You'll want to do this a couple of times, back and forth. Once you're happy, head over to Filter, Blur, Radial Blur. Make sure the blur method is set to zoom and the quality is good. Also make sure to take the anchor point of the blur center to the top middle. This should turn your painted section into some streaks, but we aren't done yet. We need to keep repeating this step until we're happy with the look of our streaks. Once we're satisfied with the look, you can hit the move tool. Hold shift and drag down to elongate the streaks. Once you're happy with the look of the light streaks, shy away the black layer below and make your main layer visible again. Head back over to your main light source layer and in the blend mode, go to the screen settings. This will help us see the light source much clearer. Using the move tool, rotate the streaks to fit the image composition. Adjust the streaks to however best suits the image you're editing. Once you're happy, add a layer mask to the streaks layer. Go over to the brush tool and select a soft brush. Make sure your brush is set to the color black and paint away any excess light streaks. Just as a reminder, be sure to be painting in your layer mask and not directly onto the layer. I've made that mistake a few times, which always ends up me having to start this section all over again. Once the unnecessary streaks have been erased, go over to the opacity slider and drop it down to around 50%. The image is starting to come together, but to add some finishing touches, let's get some particles and add them in. Simply Google particle overlay and drop them into your document. Once the particles are in the document, go into the blending options and set it to screen once again. This should remove the black background. Resize the particles using the move tool. To downscale without skewing the image, hold the option key while dragging down. Create a layer mask to the particles layer and drag the layer to create a duplicate. Play around with the sizes to see what works best for your image. 
If you hold the command and hit the L key, it should bring up the levels adjustment. In the input levels, slide the left slider slightly to the right. This should remove any harsh edges. Once you're happy with your particles, let's make the image warmer by adding a photo filter. To do this, go into your adjustment layer, click on photo filter, find a warming filter and slide to around 20%. To finish off, let's add some grain. This is something you can skip, but for me, it gives it more of a cinematic look, which I prefer with my images. Go into your layers panel and select all your layers by pressing Command A. Right click and merge layers. Once you've merged your layers, go into filter at the top and open up camera raw filter. Go straight down to grain and add around 20 in the value box. Once you're happy with your grain, click OK. There you go guys, that is the end of the tutorial unfortunately, however there is some more content on its way so if you did enjoy that and you learned something then please share it with a friend and most importantly subscribe because there's going to be some fire content, fire, absolutely fire, I'm burning them now. <laughs>